It's alive. It's alive. It's alive. It's alive. Hello and welcome to a live after reading. I'm Tim Niederreiter, and with me today is another author. I, I, I gotta find something better to say than author. Ian Q. <laughs> Malcolm, welcome to the show. Hey, how's it going, Tim? Uh, going well, going well. And I think we're, I mean, judging by the how dark it is outside, it's going to be New Year's, or it has been New Year's just recently. I forget which. But uh, <laughs> it's the time shift in nature of podcasting, so Happy New Year. Eh, happy New Year to you as well. Well, uh, yeah, so <laughs> hopefully a happy, profitable year for everybody listening. I say profitable because I'm hoping to really take my career to the next level as far as books go this coming year. So, uh, But anyway, we can all dream. So anyway, <clears throat> Ian, introduce yourself. Uh, but tell us a little bit about your books and you know the sort of stuff you do with them. Yeah, absolutely. So um, as Tim said, my name is Ian, um, though I write under the name IQ Malcolm. Because if you mm. search Ian Malcolm, all you get is a barrage of shirtless Jeff Goldblum pictures. I figured I can't compete with that. Um, <laughs> okay. so, yeah, yeah. So I write um, mostly psychological thrillers and YA and slash, you know, middle grades fantasy. Uh, my latest book is The Draxler Program, which is a psychological thriller. Uh, yeah, that's kind of it in a nutshell. Nice, nice. So The Draxler Program, uh, that is a book that I, apparently I'd forgotten about this, but I actually helped you brainstorm and spoiler alert for those who aren't aware, Ian and I are actually uh, writing group members. Uh, yeah. We we are part of the same writing group. So we have uh, gotten to know each other fairly well recently. Oh but, yeah. Uh, yeah. But it was a while ago that I helped you inter- helped you brainstorm that story. But I, then uh, tell us about, a little bit about what that's about. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, so actually you're even thanked in the book as well. So you really need to get on that. Um, so, <laughs> I, 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 will, I must read it now. It's yeah, necessary. So, uh, so basically, um, it's about this guy who was a convicted car artist. Um, and in this future society, um, if you're convicted of a serious enough felon, at the end of your sentence, you get brainwashed. Um, so in order to avoid that fate, he decides to join a criminal reform program. But it turns out it's not actually a reform program. It's a reality TV show. And all the felons are uh, contestants. Mm. It's kind of like the running man in a way. Yeah. yeah. Um, how I like to compare it is kind of like black mirror meets uh, the Truman show. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's such a good, that's such a good pitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so is this, is, is, is do you, how heavy did you go on the sci-fi, sci-fi elements in this story? Um, so because I am incredibly dumb, I didn't want to go to sci-fi. Um, I so I heard you know there's science fiction, and you know science fiction. I'm definitely right. the latter of the two. Um, so most of the science that you know came into play uh, was mostly bioplausibility. Um, so I was very fortunate. Uh, my mom's a doctor, mm. um, so to figure out how to keep these criminals in check, you know, I talked to her about you know what we could do with a vagus nerve implant. Um, so you know if you use that, you can drop someone's heart rate low enough to, um, you know, basically knock them out. So, it's, okay. you know, doing things like that and checking like, hey, you know, is this actually possible? Um, but I really err on the side of caution because I knew if I went to too much detail, people would be like, nope, you're dumb. That doesn't work. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely want side of caution there. Oh, as opposed to me, I would just throw myself off the ledge. Anyway, yeah. the thing... <laughs> Hopefully not my readers as well, though. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so uh, yeah. So this, so your protagonist is this con artist. Did you, does that play into how he handles the problems in the book? Do you think? Um, absolutely. Um, so he's always trying to thinking about you know, uh, what's the angle here? You know, how can he manipulate these other people into getting what he wants? Um, it's really great because it later gets all turned on him. You know, he thinks he's conning these other people, and really he's been conned um, this whole time. Yeah, the reality TV show game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I just remember watching, I, and this is this is tangent time, but I remember watching the first season of Survivor when I was a kid, like bagging <laughs> newspapers for my paper route. Mm-hmm. Anyway, 
And, and the whole family, we, we all just, we were all just watching this. And there was that one guy who ended up winning. It was everyone hated. It was ridiculous. Was that the guy who lied about like his grandma dying? I like, can't like, remember. That was a while I remember ago. That happened once. Like, I can't remember what season it was. It's all a blur to me. <laughs> yeah. I'm not a huge fan of reality TV. Maybe that's why. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> a fan of really? most. Just, just The Bachelor. My wife has got me hooked on The Bachelor. Um, so that is like my guilty pleasure show. But besides that, nothing much. Ah, uh, yes, yes. I, yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's we're probably going to steer clear of that. Yes. So as far as writing your book, <laughs> did well. I mean, I mean, it does kind of play in because as far as writing your book, how much of the reality? I mean, like you know, the Hunger Games and stuff they play on reality TV tropes. Mm-hmm. How, how much of those did you fold into your story here? Because you said it was more like the Truman Show, which is almost like pre-reality tv reality tv right because it's such a it's a relatively old movie by, by now yeah um so i don't think there's too many reality tv show uh, show tropes in this book just because um the contestants don't realize that they're part of a reality tv show for such a long time so for them it truly does feel like reality it doesn't feel so scripted um however there was other elements of reality that came in like um so the reason why um p was arrested um, was that he was accepting bribes from basically state and local governments. Um, he was pretending to be um, a representative of this big, you know, multi-billion dollar company saying, hey, we're going to put a headquarters in your, you know, your town, your city. But, uh, you know, what's in it for us? You know, you need to pay us something under the table. So mm. that's what got caught up to him. So there's little things like that that kind of draw from, you know, things we can see happening in reality. But yeah, well. yeah. No, that makes sense. I, 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 I so, but that's more, more like the political, the behind the scenes stuff to a little mm-hmm. bit, right? Yeah. Uh, as opposed to, you know, Hunger Games, where it's like, okay, yeah, you got to make the fans happy or whatever. You're actually, you, they know they're on TV. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, yeah. I, I take that back. I did think of one trope right now. <laughs> uh, so they're like, we end, um, you know, a little spoiler here. Uh, around the end, you know how those reality TV shows have like the after show. Like at the, we recap the whole season, right, you, know, yeah. you interview all your favorites. Um, there is a scene like that in the book, which was a ton of fun to write. Oh, that's awesome. That's very meta too. You know, it's like mm-hmm. you, you're getting in there and you get to the point where people are talking, you, you, as you recap the book kind of thing before the climax, I assume. Mm-hmm. That's pretty, uh, that's pretty n- nice. It's, uh, it's, and I, like I said, meta, it gives me this feel of, you know, a book, a, a book that's kind of knows that it's a book in some ways or a story that knows it's a story, you know, mm-hmm. which is really, that's really neat. Uh, it does, uh, that's, I mean, even if I didn't already know, uh, enough about this story, that kind of does pique my interest, that kind of thing where you frame the story somehow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I find uh, like, I, I hate that I'm always recommending. I'm not recommending this book. In fact, I, major well, trigger you. warning it. Not your, <laughs> not your book. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about a different book. Yeah. I'm about to mention. So but, why did I come here again? No, just kidding. No, no. I like <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't really recommend your book. I haven't read it yet. But the thing is, uh, I, I still think. Uh, I, I mean, your book sounds intriguing, and I, I, I was going to say it does remind me a little bit about of this of this Orson Scott Card book, and that's why I'm like, I can't believe I'm about to recommend this book. Or or mention this book again because it did make a big impact on me. Hearts Hope is the name of the book. Okay. Again, major trigger warning. It's fantasy, but it's extremely dark. And the ending has this twist where you, the whole time you thought at first you start off thinking the book's third person book, you know, third person omniscient. Then mm-hmm. it moves into you realize there's someone telling a story to somebody. And at the last in the in the last sentence, you realize who they're telling the story to. So who the reader is supposed to be in this story. Okay. And all these people are characters in the book. And I thought that was just so crazy. I mean, it really, really worked for me. But And that's why I've not forgotten it, even though I really don't don't have much care for Orson Scott Card these days. Yeah, I'll definitely have to check that out. That's- anyway, it, it's it's kind of a similar thing where it's like you re- it recontextualizes how you feel about the, the, the characters in the book. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, I'm not, not necessarily saying your twist is necessary. Is that huge? Or not twist, but the, the part where the characters are come out of the game or whatever, and now they're like, oh, now they're being interviewed. But but it's it's kind of, it's, it, it rings the, of a similar uh, t- type to me. Yeah, tune maybe. Can't can't get my metaphors right. Uh, so anyway, it's all good. <laughs> so as the other thing you said, you said uh, what are you, you you said you're working on something right now, and that's uh, middle grade fantasy, right? Yeah, so this is definitely a middle grade like portal fantasy. Um, I don't mm. really have the sales pitch down for this one. 
Um, so well, don't worry. I mean, no one expects you to do that right away. But, oh, yeah. perfect. Um, <laughs> so Tim, so besides being a writer, when you were little, what was something you dreamt of being, you know, when you grew up? Uh, only briefly an astronaut. Okay. So <laughs> unfortunately for those of you listening, Tim is not an astronaut. Um, darn, that did not happen. No, not darn. I just, I chickened out. Like, <laughs> Uh, within a year of thinking I might want to be an astronaut, I'm like, nah, the writing seems a lot safer. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. go on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so basically when, you know, your dream died or you gave up on the, you know, the idea mm. of being an astronaut, you know, the dream didn't really die in, in my world, the book I'm writing. Um, it goes on to this, this dream world called the land of unlived dreams. Um, mm. So there's a brother and sister um, who come to realize that their father is very, very sad and struggling with a lot of problems. Um, and their grandma tells them it's because he's lost his dream. So they go journey to this unknown world and attempt to save their father. Nice. That's a, that's actually a pretty good pitch. I, uh, <laughs> are you a natural this or something? Anyway, um, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not sure if I believe that you didn't practice that. No, um, <laughs> No, I'm sorry. Uh, but no, that, I really like that idea. It's kind of, again, it kind of reminds me of Shades of the Sandman, the Neil Gaiman comics. Okay. Where there's the, there's in there, there's a dimension where it's just full of things, ever, of pe- things people have lost. So anything oh. people have lost ends up in this place. Okay. I think, I think there was, that, that's kind of, that, that, that I just mentioned is kind of a fantasy trope that I've seen in other places too. Mm-hmm. Uh, but well, the tropes dream, are there for a reason <laughs> exactly and th- this isn't like a trope that's been abused a whole lot either mm-hmm. so I, I and i really like the dream angle on it you know it's it, so it goes out and the, is the yeah anyway so the, but i but i've noticed that that's that's bouncing around genres kind of like i've been doing because yeah. you know, i've been writing a fantasy series and i'm like i want to do a space opera series I'm like, mm-hmm. uh, yeah i i definitely want to eventually write a bunch of different genres uh, but for the foreseeable future, I want to stick into just to continue to build an audience. Um, mm-hmm. I do have a great idea for an action adventure series that, you know, is coming down the line. But I need to get some some writing experience under my belt before I, I try to tackle that. Oh, completely understand that. I just I have too many ideas. That's basically mm-hmm. where I why I have so many why I have trouble with this because I'm I, the ADHD won't let me stay stay with one story. But. Uh, and you just, and it seems like you're kind of similar. I mean, not the ADHD part, but the necessarily, but you know, you, de- you definitely have this kind of wider breadth of the kind of tales you tell. Mm-hmm. What do you think that is? Um, I just think it's because I've always been drawn to so many different things. Um, yeah, I know there are some people out there who are like, Oh, I've always loved sci-fi. You know, it's the only thing I ever read. Um, mm-hmm. but I've, you know, I've watched so many different things. I've read so many different things that, you know, it just comes from that inspiration. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, yeah. And if, if you can't, I'm mean, definitely. And if you can't hear that, there's a cat now meowing at me. I don't okay. know why. So uh, yeah, no, that makes so much sense. I mean, there's just all these. There's, I mean, everyone has so many influences these days too. I mean, mm-hmm. all creative people are be, are just inundated with media at this point. I would say, mm-hmm. it, unless they were consciously work to turn it off to you know hide away from it. Yeah. I'm not sure which is better, though. You know, I mean, because I, honestly, if I'm listening to, I mean, especially with me, I mean, I listen to music, listen to a lot of heavy metal and stuff when I'm writing. And sometimes silence is what I need when I'm writing. But a lot of the time, it's absolutely a killer to me. Yeah. So, um, so, yeah. I, go I'm on. kind of the same way. Um, though, if I do listen to something, I can't have words. Because then, like, I'm a lyrics guy. I love, like, listening to lyrics and, like, you know, try to figure out the meaning. So if I hear any lyrics, I, like, lose all focus. Which was one of the nice things about writing when I was in Spain. It's like, I didn't understand what anyone was saying, so I could just write anywhere. <laughs> um, moving back, that has been a challenge. Yeah, no, I can see that. I mean, I uh, and I, I really like writing at when around other people, but mm-hmm. then, you know, but not listening to them. You know, I got the headphones on, they're going mm-hmm. to something, and then I, there's, but there's motion, there's something going on around me. If the room's too still or too, you know, or too uh, just non cluttered, I guess, too, too peaceful in any way it gets it gets it kind of gets to me i'm like okay. Oh, okay this is the perfect place to sit uh, so uh, interesting. there's something wrong with this yeah. keeps me thinking about other things uh, i'm too much of a social butterfly if there's people around me i am often talking I'm well, that, that's, yeah, that's fair <laughs> uh but it does make sense to me that 
Well, in, in my case, it's like it's more like what you're saying with Spain, where I'm like I would sit in the in a cafeteria and I wouldn't really know any of the people around me, but I want to okay. sit there. If there's yeah. people I know around, it's more like you just the the alternative. Oh, I want to talk to these people most mm-hmm. of the time. So, uh, yeah. So, as far as your your process with writing, uh, what is are there any techniques you would pass on to people? You would say to people at this point. I mean, I know you're fairly a fairly young writer at this point. Um, this, uh, but but what would you, what would you say is a skill that you feel like is really important to your writing at this point? Um, I think a skill that's important to my writing at this point is just time management. Mm. Um, so I know you know this from you know our group chats, but I'm working full time. I'm going back to school full time. You know, I'm trying to make a living as a writer, and I have a wife who likes to see me from time to time. <laughs> uh, so you know, my my time is limited. So, you know, I wake up early. I wake up around 5.30 every morning to get an hour of writing in before work. You know, I write on my lunch break. I write on my other break. And I come back and then it's all homework after that. Um, so it's really just making pockets of time and being deliberate about it. Um, yeah. No, that kind of deliberation, deliberate practice, that's really useful. And I, I think making the time helps you value your activities more. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I would just guess because, I mean, I, I've kind of got the opposite trouble. I have too much time on my hands most days <laughs> and it it eats it eats at me. You know, it's like, OK, I'm just kind of falling apart because there's nothing to keep me hold me together. No pressure. You know, mm-hmm. uh, at least that's how it feels some days on, on the rough ones. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. But I, and you do a pretty it, it, and when you put it that way, it's like I under, now when it's beginning, I begin to understand a little clearer that actually your work counts are pretty impressive in our group. Not that we're going to get into that, but that's pretty, that's a pretty good rate that you get to them. Yeah. Thank um, you. <laughs> Hopefully one day it'll be better. Um, yeah. Well, you get more time I'm on your hands. the fastest writer sure. in general. <laughs> yeah. Uh, who, who is the fastest writer? Oh yeah. Probably. I say you are Murdoch. Yeah. Well in the group, well, you know, yeah. Murdoch's been on this show too. So that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Right? A long, a long while ago. But uh, J.R. Murdoch, uh, I'm I'm not I'm not that quick. I could be faster. Is really the thing. I'm not that consistent. Is the main problem. But that's not really the important part because the important part is telling a good story, and that's that's what I've been realizing lately. That's kind of what I want to turn around because this is probably going to be the last. This is either the last show of the year or the first show of the new year. <laughs> and here I go <laughs> babbling, just babbling. So as far as uh, my my kind of my the, the, and I'm going to take it down a second here because okay yeah th- this is kind of like okay when I have a I, I'm trying to I'm trying to plan ahead and I'm like yeah when I get back from my Christmas vacation which will happen by this point which you know, it's very confusing how time works here and we're mm-hmm. in a we're a temporal anomaly but the thing is well, as soon as I get back to work and for me work is writing because I'm a lazy person I don't do anything <laughs> else uh. Yeah, I just I just don't know how I'm gonna be able to guarantee that I put the time in that I need to do because <laughs> there's so much there's so much so many distractions as much as I don't have and and it's and it just I'm again just a lazy person easily distracted. Uh, I guess that doesn't really that's kind of a downer, but I, I, do you have any ideas of how to manage how how do you manage your time so effectively? You not just haul off and do something different when it comes to writing. <laughs> Oh, your writing time. Yeah. Some days it's easier than others. Like some mornings, like I wake up and I'm like, oh, I don't want to do this, but uh, it's become such a habit. I know today was day 135 straight mm. of writing. Um, so I That's mean, you know, some awesome. of those days yeah. aren't aren't many words, but it's just building the consistency. Um, yeah, no, that's a good yeah. point. Yeah. I, I know. Um, also, when it comes to my writing, knowing where I want to go in the story helps a lot. Um, so I know we often talk about, you know, pantsers and plotters. Um, I try to stay like three chapters ahead of where I'm at. That mm. way I don't have to sit there at the screen and say like, okay, where am I going next with this? You know, how's this all fitting together? Cause I have an end game in mind and also a little room to work with that. That, no, that makes sense. sense. That's, that's, how, that's how very much I've done similar things in past books right now. I've noticed the thing that helps me the most is just knowing a bunch of characters who go in the setting and knowing mm-hmm. that they could pop up in various places. I can just put them in because that's the, that's the hardest part for me is characters. Um, okay. I can kind of make a story happen really easily. Mm-hmm. And as long as I have a, char- a bunch of characters in the world, 
but I don't, but if I, if there's, if I can't just have somebody walk onto the screen and, and then suddenly figure out who they are, oh, yeah. that's a harder, that takes, that takes more effort for me. Okay. So, so, so winging, winging the preparation on the characters is really tough for me. Okay. Um, you know, I, and I've noticed my most effective works are all that were all ones where I just like 30 or 40 characters or even more in a list. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and then I just jumped off from there. Yeah. Because I'm the opposite. I, I don't really think of my characters before time have like a general name for them. But yeah, you know, mm -hmm. I write with them for a while and then I figure out like, oh, this is how this person is. And then I go back, you know, the second draft and the other editing stages and fix the early parts to match more of how they are. Yeah, um, it seems well, that definitely happens to me sometimes too. But yeah, go on. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, so one of the constant compliments I've got in my review so far um, have been the characters. I was like, oh, people actually like them. Okay, wasn't expecting that. But again, we're our own worst critics. So. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It seems like you, I mean, you. How many reviews do you have? I need to look at your Amazon page, maybe. But uh, I had nine, but now I'm back down to eight. Oh, those uh, Amazon Because one of those reviews people. was from my uh, my former stepmom, and her the last name still Malcolm, so they chopped that one off. <laughs> oh, oh, that's yeah, they got, they got they got that one, hunted them down. Mm -hmm. That's still pretty good man, for a first book, especially. You guys, they get, they've been uh, good job getting all those reviews out there. On, oh, I have a hard time. I have a hard time hunting for reviews, and uh, that's that's a challenging process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, were you going to say something? No. But oh, I, I need to, don't I? Oh, so. <laughs> this is a podcast. So, yeah, that would be a good idea. Now, um, when it came to finding reviews, a lot of it has just been um, list building. Um, mm, okay. So, I've, you know, I, you know, Google search, not Google search. I'm, I'm on Instagram a lot. Um, it's probably the main social media that I use. So I'll pin myself here, ding. Uh, if you're on Instagram, follow me. It's i.q.malcolm. Um, so yeah, I always search things like bookstagram or you know book reviews and try to find book reviewers who like the genre that I'm writing in. So that's a case of finding people whose reviews I like who I think will get enough traction um, and reaching out to them. Um, so a lot of my reviews have come from that. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so far, I mean, I'm I'm not the most public. I'm, I don't publicize my work enough, probably. Mm -hmm. uh, I need to get get on that in the new year too. Uh, don't be afraid so, to pimp yourself. That should be your motto this year. Okay? Yeah, that's good. That's gonna be either that or a sweet tattoo. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. No tattoos. I'll just make. Well, my okay. <laughs> uh, so as far as so. I, I, there was one other thing I wanted to ask you about as far as the writing goes. Yeah. And that's because with the Draxler program, you've got this kind of close to this near future kind of, uh, kind of thriller. And mm -hmm. I'm going to say it always scares me to write so close to the world. We understand, you know, the, the modern world. And mm -hmm. that's why even my, even my cyberpunk books are not very cyberpunk. -y. They're very weird future. Um, some might almost say an alternate future kind of thing. Mm -hmm. because because of the level of just okay that can never happen basically that that setting is out there it's completely weak bizarre and i guess what i'm trying to say is how do you avoid that you know the moving line that's going to catch you or you know invalidate it, or do you worry about it invalidating your work if it does um not really i mean there's nothing in the book that touches too much on pop culture uh besides beyonce being dead um <laughs> yeah wow. so i yeah i have a character who 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 loves beyonce um mm. yeah so i actually had a reviewer ask me like oh I, I was wondering what happened to beyonce and i was like i can't tell you how beyonce dies because only beyonce can determine how beyonce dies um <laughs> she is queen b for a reason um so besides uh, that, that's a good answer to that question. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I just steer clear of like, you know, anything that's going to get you into too much trouble. And the main reason why I did near future is just because I'm really, really lazy. Um, I didn't <laughs> want to have to make up too much stuff. So it worked out nice for me. I was going to say that makes two of us, but I like to make up weird stuff. I just make up too mm -hmm. much of it. 
Uh, it's, it's actually writing stories that I guess I get lazy about. Anyway. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> I, I guess this one was different just because like, if I knew if I made up a near uh, a futuristic world, I had to make it more science behind it. And since science is in my expertise or something mm. that I'm, I feel comfortable in uh, being near future. So I won't have to explain as much stuff worked um, in terms of the book I'm currently writing in the dreams. Like that's not science. It's a dream world. It's clearly yeah. stated. It's a dream world. I can make shit up and have fun. So I definitely <laughs> enjoyed that. Oh yeah. Uh, let, let the dreams run wild and free. Mm-hmm. Pretty yes, much. Indeed. <laughs> so uh, as far as, the the new year goes and and well, at the end of this pr- this year as we we face the the abyss of December where we're at before this show goes out I want I need to ask you where what have you been reading lately I don't know why that whole abyss of December thing came up but what have you been reading lately <laughs> yeah so when I haven't been reading college textbooks which I only <laughs> skim right before my tests because who reads them um, let's see I finished listening to a wrinkle in time recently uh, because someone told me that. Um, my book that I'm currently writing reminded them of that. I was like, oh, I should check that out. Because um, I knew it was made into a movie, and my wife loves A Wrinkle in Time. Um, so, yeah, I read that, which was really, really good. Um, and I'm currently reading a um, – uh, it's a Neil deGrasse Tyson book. Um, mm. It's like astronomy – I can't remember the name of it. It's basically astronomy um, – you know, our, it's, it's, it's physics for, for dummies, basically. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Astrophysics. Yes, astrophysics. That's what it's astronomy. See, a, another reason why it's for dummies. <laughs> or, yes, good proof that you fit that demographic, perhaps. No. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sorry, mm-hmm. not to burn my guest. I'm uh, a terrible host, aren't I? So, <laughs> no, anyway. The, the Great Pumpkin is many things. Terrible is not one of them. And we'll just let that joke just lie there. So, <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, yeah. So as far as uh, yeah, so so that's that's a good list. I really like the wrinkle, a uh, wrinkle in time. I really yeah. like that book. I've liked that. I've, I I listened to that when I was a kid in mm-hmm. the car, and it is a it is. I mean, it's true. I think what uh, the author said about that. I forget her name. Madeline Lengel. Yeah, mm-hmm. she said what she said about that book where she where because people were telling her. You know, when she wrote, after she wrote it, this book is too difficult for children. Yeah, and she would say, "No, the the book is too difficult for adults." Mm-hmm. And that's actually one of the things so that true. I so that's one of the things I enjoyed most about the book is because writing, you know, middle grades, you know, fantasy. I was worried, you know, is the language I'm using too difficult? And I felt like I was dumbing myself down at certain mm-hmm. points. Uh, but you know, reading or listening to her book, I realized that I was probably being too too limiting yeah um, so it's really freed up my process recently because I'm, I'm not as worried about it like, i'm not throwing the thesaurus at them or anything but see yeah, i can i can pepper some good words in there now no profusions of multifarious aspects of creation whatever yeah yeah basically <laughs> or other such long confusing words that kids are just not gonna know mm-hmm Anyway, yeah. So that's as for me. I've been reading very little lately. Actually, I've, I've kind of fallen off toward the end of the year. But I think, I think I just better leave it there for now. Uh, I already <laughs> gave you a book recommendation of sorts with Heart's Hope, uh, but I though I read that one a long time ago. I think, uh, and I've been reading some nonfiction, but I can't really recommend any of that stuff. It's just not really an endorsement by any means. Obviously, so that's why we're not naming it. He will endorse my book, though. Oh, I'll endorse your book. Sure. There, I mean, there we go. There's one book endorsement for you listeners. Uh, I'm acknowledged in your book. I can. Yeah. I have to endorse it. It's, it's <laughs> a requirement. So yeah. So uh, thanks for being on the show, Ian. Yeah. Anything thanks for having me. Tell, too. Anything else you want to tell our listeners? Uh, not really. I mean, if you guys want to follow me on social media, um, best way to get get in contact with me is through Instagram, or you can check out my website, iqmalcolm.com. Um, love interacting with people, so feel free to hit me up. Awesome. And the book is The Draxler Program. Uh, where is that available? Um, so that's available exclusively at um, on Amazon.com. Um, and then uh, The Land of Unlived Dreams should be out uh, spring 2019. Excellent. And uh, it's been great having you. And as for this show, you can find us at mentalcellarpublications.com. And I don't know why I always say us. This show is basically just me and my awesome guests. Like Ian. It's and, mostly him. He's carrying and, the load here. <laughs> well, I do all the editing. Which mm-hmm. is not much. Anyway, 
the thing is, uh, so, so you, you, you messed me up again. So, okay. So mental seller publications.com. No problem. And you can follow me on Twitter. I'm at T Niederreiter. And that's, that account has become more active. You can like me on Facebook. I'm that's Tim Niederreiter. And uh, yeah, if you can spell Niederreiter, well, you know, if you can't go to mental seller publications.com and look it up, there's a post about how to spell Niederreiter <laughs> because I know it's necessary. So uh, and you can find my latest book. It's out, uh, Storm Fleet, which is the first book in the Pillar Universe series. And that is, that's been a long time in the making, and it's finally out. This is one of my favorite books I've ever written. So check that out on Amazon.com. Thanks for listening, everybody. And Happy New Year. That tears it.